on the table because they were like so, f it was a tasting menu and they were so full that they couldn't really eat it. Oh no. It was just so annoying that I like slaved over this thing that, so annoying. I was annoyed that I slaved over. Ah! Paris, hello. Thank you. I got it. Ah! Oh, I caught it. I caught it midair. So here we are. It's day four of Chaco Taco, but really like day 30 something of quarantine. Claire. What? It's yeah. Day it's it's day, day five? five? Are you serious? <laughs> it's Damn. Day like 305 at this point. <laughs> yeah. It's day <laughs> five? All right, now I have to re-slate. Gourmet makes at home Chaco oh. Taco day five. Take one. Hey everyone, it's Claire. I am here in my kitchen at home and I did not go back to the test kitchen for day five of Chaco Taco. I should say now, we might have to let them freeze overnight. So we might need day five? Sure, if you want to call it that. Um, we're fast forwarding almost five weeks later and I'm gonna complete Chaco Taco Gourmet Makes episode in my kitchen today, all in one day. And um, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be awesome. It's been many, many weeks since the end of Chaco Taco, but we did not want to fail ourselves or our viewers at home. So today I am finishing Chaco Taco, which basically involves a total redo of the entire process, modified, obviously, for my home kitchen. I do actually have the original homemade Chaco Tacos here, but they did not really survive the delivery from the test kitchen to my kitchen. I'm so happy to get these out of my freezer, by the way. <laughs> Here they are. Oh my God, they're totally stuck. Well, the ice cream froze solid eventually. That's such a shame really, because I, th I think these were gonna taste really good. The ice cream totally squished out and it's extremely soft. Like it bends like the original Chaco Taco. Although I just wanna say that that cross section doesn't look too bad. There's like a little bit of that swirl in it. So basically this whole thing, we just have to scrap it and start over. Maybe I'll keep some, maybe I'll scrape out the ice cream and save it and, and we'll eat it later. So essentially I'm going to redo everything that I already did about the cones. Instead of using the dehydrator, I'll use my oven on a low setting. My oven goes down to 150, which is great, which is like kind of close to the temperature of the dehydrator anyway. I have my waffle iron preheating. It's actually kind of hard to find ice cream right now. So I just got the best I could find in my nearest grocery store, which was vanilla Haagen-Dazs. So we're going to Make do with that. I think it'll still be delicious. Plus Chaco Taco originally is vanilla, right? Isn't it vanilla ice cream? Oh, also, you guys, we have cannoli molds. Thank goodness for online shopping because these are gonna help me make the cones. So instead of making hot fudge, I was thinking about making chocolate ganache, um, which doesn't quite have the same texture, but would freeze similarly. However, I don't have heavy cream. So, but I do have creme fraiche and milk. So I was thinking maybe I, there's some, thing I could do there, but I'm not so sure. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. The thing I think I'm most bummed about is those perfectly chopped, sifted, uniform peanuts are back at the test kitchen somewhere. So Rhoda hooked me up with some ingredients. You'll notice that some of them have been opened and, and you know, like eaten, because we just like had this thing of peanuts sitting around for so long for this episode. So I opened them and we've eaten some. But anyway, I think it's time to get started. I'm using the original recipe I used with a couple modifications. I want to get my masa harina. This one we ordered from Bob's. So I'm going to start toasting this and actually I'm just gonna put it in my toaster oven on a little tray. It was important to me, even if we're not doing those great flavors in the ice cream, that at least we're having the added texture and flavor of the masa harina in the cone. So this recipe uses egg whites, white sugar, which I have, brown sugar, which I have. Oop. I didn't burn it, you guys. I'm shocked. There's the toasted masa harina. Got a little dark on one corner, but whatever. This calls for oil. I'm gonna use butter. I've never had a flame be so close to my laptop right now. It's a little scary. Let me grab, I'll use vanilla, why not? I have my homemade vanilla extract. I mean, I call it homemade vanilla extract. Really what I do is I mix I mean, I use a lot of vanilla beans and I want to save the pods, so I put them in this jar and then I started it with a little bit of vodka, like a neutral flavor, high proof alcohol. But then what I also do to amplify the flavor is whenever I have a little bottle of um, vanilla extract, 
when I've used most of it, I just pour it in and top it off. So it's kind of just to fortify it. All right, the butter's melted. And now into the butter all the way, my honey, the butter like greases the container and then the honey is way easier to pour. So that just slides right out. And I'm just gonna do a big pinch of salt, baking soda. So maybe I'll do 25% masa harina, 75% flour. Start blending. Now add the dry. I feel like it's looser than it was before. Did I add too much liquid? I don't think it was this loose last time. Did I already screw it up, you guys? Also, just so you know, placement of the camera is such that it's sitting on the couch, and if I were to actually pour this liquid out, it would pour onto my couch, so I'm gonna be careful here. Yeah, why don't I just add the rest of this? Then I don't have to like figure out what to do with it later, because why not? I think it needs more flour. I measured everything very carefully, and now I'm just throwing stuff in. Well. <laughs> All right, that looks better to me. I'm gonna do a test on the iron, which is hot right now. But before I do that, I should really come up with a system for forming them around these cannoli molds because that is a really important step and it has to happen right after I take each cone off of the iron while it's still hot. I just had such a good idea. This is a bench scraper. I love this little bench scraper. It has sort of a perfectly shaped like tube around it and a straight side. I wonder if this could be helpful for me. I mean, the circumference is similar. It's a little bit wider. Oh no, this is a good ladle too. Oh well, well, let's, I'll, will Conde re reimburse me for a ladle? Well, so far things are going great. All right, I'm just looking for something where I can rest. Maybe I don't even need to do it that way. I'm just thinking, sorry. I'm much more aware now of the time that this is taking because I'm watching my phone record this and I haven't done a whole lot. You know, maybe it's honestly just this one. Sorry, John, you didn't really have to order me all those cannoli molds maybe after all. Oops. It's okay. So I'm just trying to think about this. I think that that would work. So now I just have to kind of stand this up. All right, guys, I figured it out. Okay, so here's my setup. And in fact, I'm gonna tape it to the edge so that it stays in place and that the sides stay parallel. Okay, so I have my melted butter and my batter. Oh no. So I think I have to add more flour because this one got really crepe-like. Like it got like a super lacy edge. You guys, this is like already seriously not working out. It actually looks delicious, but that is not what I was going for. So I'll add maybe a tablespoon of flour, a little more salt. The flavor is good though. All right, let's try again. Beautiful, beautiful golden brown color. And now take it off and form it around my mold. Mmm, so, yeah, so tasty. This guy I think is a little bit thin, so I'm gonna discard that one. So I'll go for a heaping tablespoon this time. This looks good though. So what I wanna do before I go into production mode is come up with the system that I'm going to use to dry them out. Before I had that like elaborate suspension system with paper clips and stuff, I'm not doing that this time. But what am I doing? Um, this is the part of the process that I should already know what I'm doing and I'm having some Difficulty already with the shells. So it's going great. So here's my idea. Bake all of the tacos flat with a cannoli mold in the curve, and then basically to place a little spacer right in between the two sides. And I can really just space cones, like two cones on each of the long sides, one on each of the short sides, get six of them all the way around and bake them like this. You know, what do, what do they say about creativity? or invention, what is, the, what is the mother of invention? Necessity, there we go. I got there, <laughs> necessity is the mother of invention. Ooh, okay. All right, I'm feeling like I'm kind of ready to go into production mode. The smell is awesome, it's like so toasty smelling. This guy is like weirdly small and thick, I don't know why, so I'm just gonna eat this one. Oh, there's the cat food. Where's the cat? Maya! There's the kitty, Maya. She don't care. All right, so I'm just gonna, ow, use my hands. Oh man, sorry, I was zoomed in. Ow! Ow, ow. Six of the cones propped up. 
So I'm gonna melt the chocolate and just keep that warm on the stove for coating the insides of the shells. So I'm gonna gently melt these chips. I wanna show you one of my favorite kitchen tools, which is this like little tiny heat proof spatula, perfect for stirring stuff like this. Um, and this is already starting to melt. So I'll let that gently melt. The heat is on low. And then while that's melting, um, I'm going to do that painstaking process of chopping and then sifting and re-chopping my peanuts so I get very, very uniform sizes. great here are my finely but not too finely chopped peanuts and now let me take out the cones Claire Saffis oh my god Delaney <laughs> What's up? oh my god how are you I miss you I miss you too what's going on god what I wouldn't give to have you sneak up behind me finally chocolate taco ended <laughs> yeah even a global pandemic wouldn't prevent me from finishing an episode. Of course not. Or yes. said another way, prevent other people from making me finish an episode. <laughs> how, did the, uh, how did the shells turn out? Mm. The shells look great. I should say to this camera, I'm talking to Alex Delaney on the computer. How are things in South Jersey? Um, pretty weird living at my parents' house again. Yeah, what's uh, that like? Um, it's like I'm turning into my 15 year old high school something. <laughs> totally. Totally hear the shells, uh, by the way. But it's fine. No yeah. complaints. There's Are, a backyard and a dog here, so. Oh. I mean, I wish we were in the test kitchen and you were making a cortado and I was rolling my eyes as you slinked up behind me. But, you know, we'll get back there. Yeah. We'll be back <laughs> right. someday. Right. Well, do you, are you going to check in later? Uh, yeah, I can do that. Okay. I think you should. Cool. I'll be here. I'll be here. All right. Thanks, Delaney. See you okay, bye. The shells look great. They have a nice uniform color. They're very crisp. Although the sides aren't exactly even, they have maintained parallel sides that do not converge. So I'm very happy to see that you guys can see that there, right? But now I will carefully one by one take them and coat them on the inside with this lovely melted chocolate. All right, I feel like on the upswing. There we go. Wait, they have those things that like snowboarders wear, not a GoPro, but that like go hit that like connects onto their um, helmets or something. Yeah, that's a GoPro. Oh, that's what I need because then you see what I see and I have my hands free. I'm gonna put these in the fridge so that the chocolate can set up. And um, I'm gonna try a little experiment where I make ganache, except I don't have any heavy cream, so, but I have a lot of creme fraiche and I have milk. So I'm hoping I can get something with a similar consistency and that'll be fine. My concern about this process is chocolate and creme fraiche are like very sensitive ingredients and can easily break. So I just wanna be careful that I'm not going to like ruin this batch of chocolate and make kind of a broken, greasy mess. And also this bowl is like a huge mess. I seriously cannot fathom working with chocolate in a way that doesn't just turn into like a huge, huge mess. This is crazy. I have my chocolate already melted. I don't think I'll need a lot of ganache, but maybe I want to supplement with a little bit more chocolate. Let's get this melting back over my water. So I have that leftover melted butter in this tiny skillet. I'm going to weigh out some milk. So let me get this heating up because I can't add cold milk to this mixture. I can move my computer cord because I'm about to light that on fire. <laughs> Basically what I'm trying to do is approximate a mixture of milk and creme fraiche that equals roughly like the fat content of heavy cream. I'm feeling like things are going pretty well from home. We've been shooting for a few hours and already I've done like three days of work from Gourmet Makes. Obviously hindsight is 2020. <sighs> I hope this ganache works. Don't seize, please don't seize. And with ganache, you want to stir gently in little concentric circles and try not to incorporate too much air into it. This looks good. I'm happy with this first stage of this process. To incorporate the creme fraiche without breaking it, I'm going to basically temper it. I'm gonna drizzle in a little bit of the chocolate mixture and whisk it into the creme fraiche. And I'm going to whisk it gently now into the chocolate and milk mixture. But this mixture looks really, really good. It's super smooth, there's no breakage. So now I'm going to incorporate 
the butter. It's so good. I love the little tanginess from the creme fraiche. I hope it sets, but basically I'm gonna leave it here and now we're gonna, we're gonna take a little bit of a break. I'm feeling great. I had a little lunch. I started the dishwasher. I'm gonna start thinking about assembly because I'm just not totally sure how I'm gonna put them together. Clearly the method I used the first time around did not work so well, but here are the shells. They're looking so good. The chocolate is totally set and they certainly, that has really helped them gain a bit of heft, which I think should only make filling them with the ice cream a little bit easier. I can pretty confidently say that I'm not gonna pipe it. I think that that was a mistake last time. Whether yeah. you wanted to hear it or didn't wanna hear it, that's what I'm saying. Okay, you guys got that pipe. It's melting, oh my God, this is, this is so hard. Oh, it hurts, it's cold, help. <laughs> The pressure of forcing it through the bag, plus the heat of my hands around the plastic pastry bag really contributed to melting. Basically, I have an idea where I'm gonna take the ice cream, peel off the paper pint container, cut the ice cream into slabs, and now fitting them while still frozen into the tray. And I'm gonna return it to the freezer briefly. Ah! Okay, I will deal with this later. All right, can I hit stop on this thing now? I think the cats are vying for an appearance. Kitty. Actually, I think they're hungry. Kitty. My goal in this quarantine is to make my cats into stars. Here is my block of ice cream. I'm going to turn it out onto these sheets of plastic. Then let me roll it into a slab. I think I need to chill it before I do the ganache. Whew. I think that, that all of this chilling, while it's a little annoying to start and stop so many times, it's really gonna help prevent meltage when I assemble the Chaco Tacos, finally. So now I'm ready to incorporate my ganache. Ay, 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 a little messy. I'm going to just really just drizzle this ganache on. And really now my idea is just to kind of roll this. Let me see if I can press it down one more time. It's already getting a little soft though. I'm gonna stick this back in the freezer. Oh my God, hi Rhoda. Claire. Rhoda, hi, oh my God. How are you? Hi, how are you? How's it going? It's going really well. I've done like three days of work in like four hours. Here they are. Wow. Fresh, freshly made Chaco Taco shells. All the ingredients have been great. Thank you. So like working at home instead of in the test kitchen. In some ways it's it's less convenient because there's a lack of, of counter space, but in other ways I think it makes me work smarter actually. Well, maybe you have a little less distraction, a few less hecklers at home. You can just kind of... Totally. Put your head down and get to work. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But this is such a fun part where like, you stopped by, Delaney stopped by earlier. So it's what really, it's make, I know really, it's making the quarantine a lot better. It's good, it's good. I'm happy to sort of be like back at work, even though not really. Um, thank you so much for stopping by. Yeah. That was Can so funny. See the final product? Oh, I'll text you tons of photos. Bye, okay, thanks Rhoda, you. bye. Miss you too, hopefully see you soon. Oh, it just makes everything better. One idea I had was to actually use a very large circle cutter to punch out the semicircular shape that I need. So I'm just gonna start cutting semicircles out of the ice cream, take my shell, semicircle of ice cream, and hopefully fit it in. I need to flatten it more. It's like a little messy as it was before. And there's my first one overall. Highly, highly successful. And I better work like the wind. I'm gonna stick this in here and go one at a time and really, really quickly fill all the others. You guys, could, this is going really well. I did not think that it was going to be this successful with this process. The entire freezer is so sticky. The handle right there. You guys, I did that. Yay. While it was great that I made my own ice cream the last time, haagen tastes amazing. The ganache tastes great. We knew the cones were good. It's a better amount of chocolate. The proportions are better. The ice cream is less melty. All in all, this is going way better. I did not anticipate that, but 
I'm not complaining. Here's my ganache. I am just feeling like with the amount of dairy in this ganache, it's better to start with new melted chocolate um, and do the old cocoa butter melted chocolate fake tempering trick. It's really easy. So I'm gonna get that chocolate melting and then we're gonna roll right into coating. I put 150 grams of chocolate and I added a little bit of this cocoa butter and I have it set over that same simmering water setup. So while that is melting, I am thinking about a way of sort of being able to return the dipped coated Chaco Tacos to the freezer um, and creating a, something of a rack so that they can remain upright and it won't compromise that coating while it freezes. So I had the idea of using these pint and quart container lids to make a little hammock almost for the tacos. But I'm just not quite sure how to keep them together. Okay, now stay. Okay, it's not working that well. Um, I feel like this is the last big problem solving hurdle and after this I'm home free. Maybe I, if I had like really, really sticky double-sided tape that might work. I could try Velcro. This is maybe sort of an elaborate and wasteful use for Velcro, but I'm a little desperate at this point. You guys, is this going on? Did we jump the shark? Is this off the rails? This is great. I didn't mean that as a good thing. Harris is gonna kill me that I'm like using all of his good Velcro. You guys, it kind of worked. There it is. That sound you hear is the sound of Velcro slowly peeling off of itself. I think I should get each Choco Taco in its holder and then put the whole thing in the freezer and then take them out one by one and dip them. They look so good, you guys. They look so, so good. Uh-oh. Oh. One popped oh, no, out. One popped out, oh no. Hold on. Oh, I think, uh-oh. Uh well, ah! Uh, oh, hold on. These are, no, uh, now I'm freaking out. Part of the problem is there, it actually isn't long enough. So what maybe what I should do is take these out. Like this is only gonna work as a holder for maybe five of them, let's say. So let me get these back in. Oh no, uh, now, I'm, now I'm a little bit screwed. Oh, now I don't know what to do. Thank God I had this loaf pan out. Let me get these guys back in the freezer also and I have to adjust my system. Whew, all right, I think I know what to do. Just need to adjust the placement of this Velcro. Now I'll put these guys inside. All right, this guy might just have to stay in here. Hi, I'm still recording, sorry. Did you find Chaco Tacos? Oh my God, look! We got, we got them, where'd you find them? I only went to one place, I went straight to 7-Eleven. Oh my God, you guys, 7-Eleven is open and selling Choco Tacos. This is a PSA. Oh, yeah. I used your Velcro. Don't be upset. I'm happy you're getting on the Velcro train. He's, helping, he's happy I'm getting on the Velcro train, you guys. Okay, so ready? How is close to me mm. Oh my God, it looks so good. Oh my God, the ice cream is melting. I just wanna say that this dipping technique is working really well, but I have to work so fast because the ice cream starts to melt. I'm gonna do the other ones really, really fast, like instantly. Okay, last one. You guys, these are gonna taste phenomenal. All right, no, Harris, you're good. You don't need this part. All right, you're done, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I'm not grumpy, I feel amazing. That worked out so well. <laughs> the only downside was the ice cream like immediately started to melt and then some of the coating slid off, so there isn't total coverage on all of them but I'm not being too picky right now. I feel great and all we have left to do is let them freeze a little bit solid and then taste. And we really saved this episode, I think. Now it's time to do the iconic gourmet makes shot, which is holding mine and the original side by side. This is original, this is mine. Mine is certainly a little bit heftier. This is, I think the best looking side. Mine is definitely thicker. Oh my God, I just dripped onto my computer, you guys. It's dripped on my laptop. Is this a bad time, Claire? Oh my God, Delaney! <laughs> I just dripped ice cream on my laptop trackpad. 
I'm doing the side by side gourmet mix. Look, look at Whoa. the. Oh, guys, I'm dripping ice cream all over. I just drip ice cream into my Calabrian chilies. Yeah, yours look way better. <laughs> Wait, I made chocolate tacos in one day. What am I doing in the test kitchen all the time? I guess I'm like talking to people. You have people like me walking around distracting you the entire time. Totally. When you try to break open a chocolate taco, it bends, right? So I want to show you with mine. Ooh! Well, <laughs> don't. <laughs> Well, it's crisp. It could really freeze a little more solid. I seriously am dripping all over the place. This is crazy. But here's a little cross section. Delaney, you can see that? Yeah. There's a nice ganache swirl in there. I was gonna say, you can see the swirl. First of all, it's so crunchy. How many did you make? Six. Okay, so you've had It's like pretty good, right? I just wanna say, I'm really getting the flavor of the uh, toasted masa harina. It's so good, you guys. I'm actually, I wouldn't just be saying this. I'm super bummed that you guys can't try this in the test kitchen. It's delicious. Also would like to comment the, the visibility of the peanuts is great. Yeah, I should really stop eating it because I have to eat dinner. Harris, come taste my Chaco Taco. You're the only person here besides cats that can okay. verify that this is delicious. Okay. Hi, Delaney. What's up, Harris? Are you well? Can I, you am, I am as well as, as I can be. Harris, we're rolling. He's looking at the mail. Hi, baby. He's petting the cat now. <laughs> It's a little bit drippy. Delish. Did you even bite down on the shell? There you okay. go. Mmm. Right? The shell is so crispy. Uh-huh. Say more things like that. It's really good. It's good, right? I'm so sad that the rest of the test kitchen and you aren't here to try these. They're so good. Honestly, See? I have managed to... Also, you... The, the grief I get for not using a coaster, you didn't think to put a plate down? This is crazy. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to melt so much. Zoom in on this. This is crazy. Because they don't need to know about our domestic squabbles about coasters. The point is, it's really good, and I'm sad that you're not here to try it. But honestly, I sort of, considering I made these all in one day, I would, like, make these again. I'm really proud of myself, and I wish you were here. I, I wish I was there, too, Claire. And we'll be together again soon in the test kitchen, I hope. We will, indeed. You should really trust Harris's opinions because he's never wrong about food and sometimes i hate to admit it but it's true oh <gasps> jay hi oh my god oh i made chaco tacos do you want to see not really like that i only get to see well how am i going to give you one to taste i don't know this is just so unsatisfying i know and they're really good i'm surprised to hear you so enthused about chaco tacos Wait. For some reason that it's like not the thing that I thought you would get like stoked on. Okay, well the reason I'm enthused is because I made them all in one day and they turned out really, really delicious. But they turned out so, so delicious. I'm so proud of myself. Here's my little rack for all of them. Wow. I'm just realizing that it's after eight. I know we've been shooting since 1230. Oh my god. Oh my god. So here I'll here I'll show you a good one. So here's the profile. Oh, I wish I could taste it. They're really good. There. Gorgeous. Today went even better than I expected. It really exceeded my expectations about what I could achieve at home, and I'm kind of proud of myself. And besides being a little loose and not quite frozen solid, I think the final product turned out so, so well. And part of me is glad that I actually had an opportunity to go back and correct some of the mistakes or some of the shortcomings of the process from the first time around. So although it's sad that the original Choco Tacos, or my version, ended up the way that they did, um, I'm glad I got a second chance to attempt them. And it was really fun and, um, you know, put a little haagen on something and you make it super delicious. So I think there is a version of this close to the one I made today that is actually sort of doable for the average cook and it's not gonna take you almost eight hours, which it has taken me today. Just make sure you have plenty of space in your freezer. I like weirdly liked this and I can't say that for every episode of Gourmet Makes. That's for sure. So obviously this episode of Gourmet Makes is a little different, but we are planning to create some version of the show that I can do at home. So it might not be exactly like the Gourmet Makes you're used to, but we're confident that we can adapt it into a really great format for me at home and for you at home as well. Thank you for watching as always. I hope you liked this episode and stay tuned for more Gourmet Makes-esque content from my kitchen. Gourmet makes it home is possible. I don't know if that's gonna be a good thing or a bad thing. Here is how you make gourmet choco tacos the second time around.
To make the cones, combine 85 grams egg whites, 50 grams granulated sugar, 35 grams light brown sugar, 28 grams honey, 28 grams unsalted butter, 7 grams water, 7 grams vanilla extract, and a generous pinch of kosher salt in a blender and blend on high until smooth. Add a quarter teaspoon baking soda, 70 grams all-purpose flour, and 15 grams toasted masa harina and blend on high until the mixture is thick and very homogenous. Heat an electric pizzala maker and lightly brush the plates of butter. Transfer a heaping tablespoon of batter onto the bottom plate, close the lid, and cook until the cone is deep golden brown. Remove the cone immediately from the iron and, while it's still hot and pliable, drape over a metal cannoli mold and press to form a hard shell taco shape. With the cannoli mold still inside the curve of the cone, set the cone on its side and slide one edge underneath an upside down quarter sheet tray set in the center of the rack so the upper side of the cone is resting on the flat side of the quarter sheet tray. Repeat until you've made at least a half dozen taco shaped cones and they're all resting on their sides along the perimeter of the quarter sheet tray. Bake the cones in a 150 degree Fahrenheit oven until very dry and crisp 35 to 40 minutes. Remove from the oven and let cool. Melt bittersweet chocolate chips over a double boiler and spoon about a tablespoon of melted chocolate inside each cone. Then use a small pastry brush to coat the entire inside of the cone in a thin, even layer of chocolate, removing any excess with the brush. Repeat until you've coated all the shells, then place the shells upright on a small tray, supported and separated by folds of a clean kitchen towel, and refrigerate until the chocolate is set. Meanwhile, finally chop a half cup of honey roasted peanuts and strain through a colander, re-chopping any large pieces that don't fall through the holes. Strain the mixture again through a fine mesh sieve, discarding any peanut dust, and set the chopped peanuts aside. To make the chocolate ribbon, pour 100 grams of barely simmering milk over 150 grams of bittersweet chocolate chips melted over a double boiler and stir until smooth. Spoon about a tablespoon of the warm chocolate mixture into a small bowl filled with 50 grams of creme fraiche and stir until smooth. Spoon two more tablespoons of chocolate mixture into the creme fraiche, whisking after each addition. Then whisk the creme fraiche mixture into the chocolate mixture until smooth. Whisk in two tablespoons of room temperature butter and a pinch of salt. Then stir the mixture over an ice bath until thickened and cooled but not totally set. Set aside. Line a quarter sheet tray with plastic, leaving lots of overhang all the way around, and place in the freezer. Remove two pints of vanilla ice cream from the freezer, uncover, and slice lengthwise through the paper pint container with a large knife. Peel away the container and lay the pieces flat on the cutting board. Cut each piece crosswise into four slices, then transfer the slices to the chilled, lined quarter sheet tray, fitting them together tightly to form a slab. Cover with the plastic overhang and freeze solid about 10 minutes. Remove from the sheet tray and beat with a rolling pin to make the ice cream pliable, then roll into an even slab. Freeze again for 10 minutes. Uncover the ice cream slab, drizzle all over with the cooled ganache, then fold the slab onto itself a couple of times to make a ganache swirl. Flatten into a single layer and freeze solid again. Repeat the folding and pressing if needed to incorporate the ganache throughout the ice cream. Making sure the slab is very cold and no thicker than the width of the cone shells, punch out large circles with a cutter and cut each circle in half. Working quickly, use a gloved hand to fit each semicircle of ice cream into each shell, pressing to eliminate air pockets and smoothing the ice cream along the opening. Transfer to the freezer immediately and chill for at least one hour. To make the chocolate coating, combine 150 grams of chocolate and 15 grams of cocoa butter in a heat-proof bowl and melt over a double boiler until smooth. Pour it into a small shallow bowl and have the chopped peanuts nearby. Remove one Choco Taco from the freezer at a time and quickly dip the curved edge of the taco into the chocolate mixture. Immediately sprinkle all over with peanuts and return to the freezer in the upright position. The Velcro pint container lid rack is optional. Repeat until all the Choco Tacos are coated. Allow the Choco Tacos to freeze completely solid, ideally overnight. Tacos. Um, should I cut?